Yum, yum. It's time for a tasty and refreshing snack. You know who I can do without? I can do without the people in the video store. Which ones? All of them. They never rent quality flicks. They always pick the most intellectually devoid movie on the racks. And now, on with the show. Hello, and welcome back to Loose Cannon, This Week in Geeks. Uh, B-movie, C-movie, D-movie, whatever movie <laughs> uh, podcast where we look at a couple pictures uh, that you probably haven't heard of. And in most cases, we hadn't seen before uh, You know, sitting down to record and, and just delve into the weird eras of, of genre pictures from anywhere from the 70s to modern day. Uh, and of course, I am not alone. I have my co-host, uh, Aaron Paulia here. How are you doing, Aaron? I'm doing okay. How are you? I am. I'm, I'm well. Uh, it's been a little while since we've recorded uh, any of these episodes. And we're, as you're listening to this, on sort of our summer break, summer hiatus from regular programming. And we wanted to get a few episodes recorded so this is coming to you uh you know in the midst of our summer vacation where it's probably going to be sweltering crazy hot and what better way than for you and i to go over some uh science fiction films from the 80s that i'm pretty sure none of us had seen except it turns out i think i had seen one of the pictures here uh so in this double bill we have uh, the 1986 uh star uh crystal and the uh, 1985 film Defcon 4. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to start with Star Crystal because I th I think it was the weaker of the two. Now, basic premise here: uh, alien runs amok on a ship, and uh, everybody tries to copy Alien. Basically. Yeah, it's it's Alien, but very <laughs> very low budget. Right? Yeah, Alien, very low budget uh, from uh, Roger Corman's uh, New World Pictures, right? So. Uh, you either going to get something very creative and interesting or something very creative and terrible usually right mm -hmm. <laughs> uh so this one i i think out of all the stuff we've, we've watched so far was probably the weakest it wasn't necessarily bad bad right you know it was it, it wasn't that bad it's generally forgettable though um but i guess i guess my biggest problem with it is that the creature doesn't look really that good they probably should have never even shown the creature yeah. and baffling it, it, misspelling it looks like a pile of bubble gum oh yeah bubble, it just looks like bubble gum yeah. and then baffling misspellings on displays yeah yeah so the basic premise uh this is actually a near future movie like they one of my pet peeves, well, I, I kind of love it, but what I kind of hate about science fiction movies is when they pick something that is only like 50 years in the future, and they try to make it seem like, you know, we, we're going to have these huge advances to the point where, like, this is something that should have been happening in two or 300 years in the future, you know, yeah. where we've populated, you know, far into deep space. Uh, like, this, as of this recording is you know less than 10 years away technically right yeah <laughs> i don't see no aliens uh aliens on spaceships and the deep space travel yet no right? i i think it's 2032 that it takes place in if i if i remember correctly or 2035 it's i just remember, yeah yeah so not that far ahead there's yeah, interplanetary yeah. spacecraft and Basically, artificial gravity as well yeah i mean cool ideas uh but maybe timelines a little <laughs> Dad. off <laughs> uh, just ever so slightly. I one thing I noticed about this film going in was uh, a lot of it. At first, I thought was like, are they ADR dubbing over everybody's voices? And then I realized it, they might have done it with some people, but I'm like, oh no, it's just really bad uh, mm -hmm. audio. <laughs> as far as like how they how they like recorded it, it's like they, oh they just didn't have a good sound person. And I'm like, oh, and then I looked it up. I was like, oh, it's Roger Corman's company. Okay, so you either have great sound or you have terrible sound. Uh, so the movie, it, it's about people discovering, uh, it's it's a uh, like an alien. Egg. Yeah, on Mars, on Mars. I think going back is, yeah, on Mars, 
and uh, it hatches. A bunch of crew people mm-hmm. get killed, right? Uh, and then, you know, and then it has sort of like an ET moment where like the alien becomes intelligent enough that it realizes that uh, you know we're not bad and we have to work together to save each other. And it was like, what? What is this? The movie shifted in tone pretty much at yeah. the end for I don't I guess it was trying to give us a message but I I don't know what that message was, no, really was supposed to be No it's it's not competent enough as 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 a plot to really give us a strong message because it's almost a body horror alien type movie all the way through up until the point where he's like no yeah. you know hey we're all cool together uh sorry for killing all your friends and eating them and displaying their corpses to you like, yeah and and the star crystal is is an ai computer crystal that the alien uses mm-hmm. to get smarter and that's that's it that's the star crystal it's not anything that you might have thought and it, it how it realizes that humans aren't crazy evil is it looks up our history yeah. and reads the bible <laughs> I was like, what? What? Oh. I was like, I'm getting flashbacks to some of your uh, oh, <laughs> some man. of your Earth yeah. vs. Soup episodes with some of the bad the, movies. The ones the that I rant against and just, I, I, I try to blink out of my memory because yeah. you know, yeah. Uh, we don't need to go there. <laughs> no, the, the, the I guess the message is sh- uh, show murderous aliens the Bible and you'll be saved. Yeah. Sort of. I guess. That's what they were trying to go for, but regardless, the two of the characters survive. Uh, the alien survives by commandeering and and uh, converting the uh, the I think it was a star like a satellite star base that's on into a ship to go back to its own home planet. The end, and it's like I, I just in watching it, I was like, wait a minute. So what was the point of this movie? It was a survival horror for for well. In quotes, horror <laughs> for like seventy-five to eighty percent of it, and then it became ET phone home, and everybody's smiley happy that they survived. But it's like, but the aliens still killed everybody. Yeah, except for and it, it it could have been. Oh, go ahead. Uh, and it, and sorry, and like I said, neutron mistakes. is misspelled all the way through this movie. <laughs> like bothers me. Yeah. Yeah. When I saw that, all I could think of was Homer Simpson when he goes and he's getting, he has to go get uh, mm-hmm. trained officially for his job, and he keeps trying to correct correct the, uh, uh, I think it was the military guy with, it's it's nuclear, <laughs> it's pronounced nuclear, when somebody yeah. keeps saying nuclear, <laughs> and it's, it's, it just popped up in the back of my mind. I'm watching. I'm like, oh god, uh, and. and very cheap sets. Uh, actors were. I don't really? know if they were professional actors, uh, because because none of the actors in this movie have a blue link to click on in, in Wikipedia. None of them were were ever famous enough to have their yeah, own. Yeah, most of Wikipedia them are article. just with this movie. And clicking on. Yeah, when I was clicking on, and like, in some cases. Like the main character just played with his own name, like his last name Campbell, character name Campbell, and that's a telltale sign. Uh, like that, actually, a couple of the characters have used their real last names. That's a telltale sign of somebody who doesn't remember their lines and and doesn't remember their character name so that the director just names you mm-hmm. your real name so that well, when they for, call for you you know what to do actors <laughs> that never really were so, um, so I mean, professionals I, I guess I can't fault them for this like they did a pretty good job being like first time actors no exactly like you're for, yeah first time actors and looking at some of their histories you know trying to find them on IMDb yeah, like this is probably the biggest project that, that most of these people ever did, if it, the yeah, only yeah. major project. So, I mean, you can see Corman's production company generally gave people their starts, and this was probably mm-hmm. a start for some people, and it just didn't go anywhere. So, it's a very generic mid '80s alien ripoff. 
Uh, the only thing of note is Glowing that the alien looks from like a big like pile light of bulbs gum. inside. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, light bulbs, and then it somehow uh, helps. They work together to like repair the ship, you, and it's like I'm you know, sorry this, for this killing movie all also of you. Also, gave me like <laughs> it, it gave me I red didn't, dwarf. I didn't know any better because of the uniforms, and I wanted more comedy bit. because of that. Yeah, and and the sets exactly, and the set quality. I was like, and the the way it was lit, it was lit mm -hmm. more like a sci-fi comedy than it was like a horror movie. Oh. But yeah, that's uh, that's Star Crystal. I mean, if if you want to get it, I think it's on Blu-ray and, and DVD, and it's, I think it's still in print everywhere. But uh, it's 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 a double feature. If you want to see something, yeah, maybe watch it. But you, this is easily skippable. And uh, in fact, uh, I will bet you uh, in yeah, six months we won't not. remember what happened. I'll agree with that. I wouldn't recommend it. I'd, I'd give it like a, a four out of ten. It's not like awful. It's not bad by any means it's just very forgettable yeah and that's that's mm -hmm. the problem i would almost rather it be really bad that like yes if you're gonna absolutely be, it's better to be bad than bland so uh moving on to i guess the the main right. attraction of this episode which is defcon 4 uh this is a better roger corman produced movie uh, for New World Pictures, this one has, as far as like a New World Pictures movie, some of the best. I'd say first, the first act is some of the best work I've seen in a Corman science fiction movie, uh, and then well, it sort of turns into what you'd expect. But uh, I'll give you the basic premise. It's a it's a Canadian <laughs> it movie, so uh, cheers for the home team, <laughs> uh, and. <laughs> yeah, the whole thing seemed to be filmed uh, outside of Halifax, uh, and they used like there's a lot of uh, not a lot, but there's a few Canadian uh, character actors in here, uh, and probably of note is Maury Chaikin. He plays the the guy that uh, sort of keeps them captive when they get to uh, when they come back to Earth. Uh, you probably know him best, like he's one of those character actors, like heavier set guy like late 90s early 2000s stuff um i know him a lot he he was like nero wolf in like the andy tv show uh, and he did a bunch of other like guest appearances if it was a canadian science fiction show or drama at some point this dude was in it kind of guy um very boisterous big personality it was weird seeing him when he was younger in this uh and then you know pretty much everybody else is uh either a Canadian character actor or uh, somebody who maybe didn't even make it. You know what I get? Same thing. They got their start sort of doing this kind of movie. Uh, so the basic premise of this movie is uh, we're in a, in a, I guess, stalemate of uh, a Cold War um, precluding pre and then after... Yeah, it it's, World it's War not exactly III, which a second. happens in it like actually a second. does seem to progress <laughs> right? because they're like uh, flipping it... through channels and seeing stations flickering off um and i thought that was fairly well done yeah yeah they they, they did yeah they they didn't do it like an, it wasn't as overtly obvious how much time was taking place between things initially but it's people that are living on um I, it's north like american or north american whatever uh uh it's a, yeah, a it's, space it's a station that is basically star wars and their job is to monitor uh russians and uh and yeah uh a, i guess missile defense satellite and their job is to monitor uh, the news and everything, be completely off the grid, so they're not really supposed to communicate with anybody. They do come within contact with the Earth to get video messages, uh, and that their job is to monitor uh, the missile defense systems and missile attacks coming in from uh, from Russia, and uh, to intercept them when they can, basically firing their own missile to blow them up when they can. Uh, essentially, Star Wars, but not. And I mean mm -hmm. Star Wars as in, you know, 
Star Wars, not the movie. <laughs> uh, and the, the movie starts, again, like I said, the first act is is probably some of the most well thought out stuff. Like just the the computer systems look legit. They don't look like they're you know MacGyvered together. Uh, the texture seeing on screen seems realistic. The dialogue, their, their techno babble for what it is, seems pretty on point when they're analyzing uh, data coming in. Um, and it, it, you, you get actually some good character moments at the beginning where uh, one of the main characters is receiving, you know, a video message from uh, a loved one who is upset, you know, obviously that he's not there. You're, you're going for months and months and months off the grid because, uh, you, you know, you're, you can't really be communicating when you're up there. Uh, and then we see that uh, for whatever reason, uh, mm -hmm. the enemy has fired a nuclear missile or, or multiple nukes. Yeah, and in fact, and one, they're one of the not able missiles to is actually everything. targeted at the space station. And uh, yeah, and they they were they're able to defend themselves or trying to defend themselves against it as well. And after this incident, that's when they start to see. Uh, oh, I think it's over the course of a month or so. All the all the the TV stations uh, from around the country and around the world start to go dark. And they don't know what's going on now. I think it's only a few months that they're up there before they have a a it uh, is malfunction of the, the, of the yeah. station, and they have to escape. And this is where, yeah, like, yeah. Looking at it, um, I think I'm looking at the script, it's two months. Now the problem with that, that the timeline is, when they get to Earth in the two months or even if it was four months even if it was six months the earth has yeah. gone complete mad max and it's like it's if they were up there for a couple of years let's say even okay let's say that they were on a space station and they had enough food and everything and air recyclers whatever if they were up there for five years i could see five years of civilization completely falling apart but in two months, in two, uh, that's where I had a problem. With it. it went, and it was clear that they they were like doing the Roger Corman thing, where they go, "Hey, uh, we got a bunch of these sets we're filming three <laughs> or four other movies with in this post-apocalyptic world. We're just going to reuse those." <laughs> except, except it couldn't be because they filmed the thing in Nova Scotia, which wouldn't have had the sets built. The problem with most post-apocalyptic <laughs> so post films they just found a bunch 80s, of junk and put it together, I Excluding guess. Mad Max, is that the world doesn't tend to actually seem that bad off in a lot of them. It's, it's wilderness, it's whatever. Like, here we see it's the woods of Nova Scotia. Um, while we're told that, like, civilization has been destroyed... Um, that there's yeah. nuclear fallout everywhere. Yeah, the, and, you know, radiation isn't visible. Yeah, and but the, there's radiation the, there's cannibals. With, Even though there's, like, deer in the like woods, radiation there's cannibals. Um, lush forests, things like that. We we hear birdsong. Yeah, we're told that there's deer out there. Enough that you can just waste meat from them. Well, and and that's the thing. What they should have done is, if they mm -hmm. should have shown Nova Scotia as it is, you know, the 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 lush island <laughs> with with everything with forest and that well, uh, beforehand, the and then they should have filmed in like the Alberta tar sands. They should have filmed it in somewhere where it's like mm -hmm. a bat. Film in the yeah film yeah, film in the winter or film in the Badlands. Film somewhere where. You know, if you look, you've established what what hmm. Nova Scotia looks like, it, and then show what it looks it like after, and how to be like I all think. the plants are dying, that sort of stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, and and also I, again, the big thing is timeline. It, I, I'm like, I would like to. Think yeah, that I would. It I would takes hope more that I would also for everybody to turn into cannibals. And, and what 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 also works against that is that they do talk about like this disease that's rampaging through everything. <laughs> And that people are like self-isolating, so you'd think that the cannibal, the people that just go immediately cannibal because I guess they really like the taste of people, yes. would be the first ones 
Well, I mean, they'd be the first ones eating contaminated people. They would eat each other. <laughs> That's true. That's true. So I guess it could spiral if you were isolated like that. Uh, I mean, it, it's it's got really good ideas. And like I said, really, really good first act. And then it turns into mm -hmm. the, the normal shenanigans, you know, from Corman post-apocalyptic stuff. But slightly better. They contain everything with the, the handful of actors that they have. Uh, they yeah. don't rely on hokey effects for anything. There's some stock footage here and there. Uh, and... Uh, you know, there, there's there's a, a military dude that's become uh, sort of a crazed uh, uh, dictator leader of the humans that are left. Um, and then there's like almost an aspect. Yeah, of, I'm not really sure uh, why it, beneath the planet of the apes where there there's a I'm bomb not really sure why that, that, that that's off. a thing in this movie. It and really they, feels tacked on. They, uh, they, they do set it up. They like say, oh look, this we can't jettison this one weapon. Um, and it's going to come back to us. But if they're on like an escape pod, you wouldn't want to have a whole bunch of weapons coming down with you. Just because of reentry, like they're going to they're going to get damaged. They're going to impact the surface. They're going to do yeah. X, Y or Z. There's <laughs> way too much danger in that. So there's no reason why it would have come down with the escape pod. I, it just seems weird. Yeah, ex exactly, and and the the movie, as a lot of Corman's films do, kind of just ends. You know, we're we're not quite at ninety minutes, and it's just like, hey, how's it going to end? Uh, a couple people get away, and then the nuke goes Corman off, and we see show. stock footage of a nuke going off, and then it cuts to the credits, and it's like, okay, for Nova Scotia, you know. Oh no. <laughs> and that's it. But, but the good thing about this movie is a bunch of the actors actually have blue links, so they did work on a lot of other things afterwards. Uh and as far as uh production mm -hmm. on this, uh this was pretty good quality for something that would have been very low budget. Uh it looks like it made over a million dollars in in the box office. You got to think I'm thinking it would have been um, Canadian it, money it said back then. It says or on Internet Movie Database that it had a more than budget of 1.7 million Canadian dollars. And a lot of that... W okay, and it made a million US. You know, it made, it made so more than it that. Probably that made like video rentals and things like that, I'm sure. Uh, like a 20% profit. 20 or 30%. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, like it, it was successful just that. with its theatrical run, even. Uh, so anything else would have been icing. Yeah, I, I do remember, like at least parts and of it. I'll, this I remember one, this seeing, one, I actually, I could... like on HBO or Cinemax or oh, something do. like that when I was back in the day when I was growing up. It, yeah, it was one of those movies that was in Haitian. There, I do remember. Uh, I've had other friends mention it. When I was looking for, I was talking to some friends, I'm like, hey, what's a good Canadian sci-fi that, you know, maybe isn't popular, people don't remember? And this is one of the ones that always came up in conversation. Uh, and I, I do remember the poster. It's a, the poster has almost nothing to do with <laughs> with what the movie looks like. Uh, but it's got it's a really cool, like, it's a poster of, like, the, the satellite that they live on somehow within the Earth's atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And, and then somebody in a spacesuit that, that, that doesn't look like anything from the movie. Video stores well, uh, and that just says DEFCON 4. <laughs> and, I mean... Exactly. This is one of those ones that was always on the shelf of every major, oh, yeah, major video are. store. They always had a copy of this. Yeah, I would recommend this one. So, I mean, this is definitely better than Star, uh, Star Crystal. Uh, this is one I actually can recommend. This is one I can say, hey, if you're looking... like. If you're looking to put mm -hmm. on something on a rainy day, or you're, you're going to do a double feature or something, and, and like you said, the first act this is something is that, that is the acting is is actually pretty good in it too. So, uh, yeah, well, in, in watching the first, I was like, this doesn't seem like a Corman movie. This seems like a, a quote unquote real sci-fi movie. 
It's like this is this has a really really good setup, and then they they landed on Earth, and I went, oh shit, it's gonna be one of these movies, isn't it? You got me again, New World and, Pictures. You know, and then it turned out that it was actually one of, it's an upper tier, post apocalyptic eighties movie. Not it's not gonna be anything like. Uh, yeah. Sorry, it's, it's not gonna um, be anything gonna like Mad the Max. I was gonna say the guy that like directed that. and wrote we this are, was you know, the Mad Max executive is producer the on Lex. Top tier of post apocalyptic movies. Hmm. Which makes perfect sense because Lex was all filmed in Halifax. So, uh, so, uh, I I knew I recognized the name, uh, Paul Donovan, and I was like, where do I recognize it from? But that that now I just clicked on it. Yeah, you're right. So, I'm trying to think if there's other things that he did. So this was, this looks to be. <laughs> one of his earliest works but yeah Lex there's something we're gonna have to talk about at some point that show was ever present in Canada because because even though nobody seemed to watch it because Canadian content laws required we have it so I've you know si I've our tried science to get fiction into channel it, but Space it's really it tough non-stop because it's like it's Canadian sci-fi it's like but nobody likes it <laughs> um, but yes it is so it, it's not British style. It's not American style. It is truly Canadian weird style. That's all I can say. <laughs> uh, whereas oh, for sure, Death for sure. on 4 is something that I think even slight science fiction fans might get a kick out of. So I think, uh, and I think this is available on, yeah, this is available on Blu-ray. So if you want to check it out there and it's probably something you can pick up on streaming like on Tubi or anywhere. Uh, I think I think there's even full copies on YouTube you can watch. So, uh, yes, that I, is I really liked it. Star I, Crystal I honestly give it like a, a 4, 6 out of 10 uh, just because of that that's first act. Do it for this honestly episode, solid. Right? Any final thoughts um, on that? They Defcon? do a really good job of setting up character beats so you actually do care about the characters a little like hey, he's he's away from his wife um, and she's calling out to him on a shortwave radio every time the satellite goes over. Um kind of talking to him and you can see the pain on his face. I don't know. It, it worked. It worked really well. Yeah. So that's going to do it for this episode. Uh, thanks for listening. Uh, we'll be back sometime in the next couple of weeks with another brand new uh, loose cannon on a couple more sci-fi pictures that we picked up from the 1980s. Are either one of these any good? Sir. What? Are either one of these any good? I don't watch movies. Quick! Change the channel! You're wasting your life making shit! Nobody cares! These movies are terrible! You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Thanks for listening to this episode of This Week in Geek. Hungry for more? Check out our website at thisweekingeek.net. You can subscribe to the podcast, browse our Twitter and Instagram, and leave your thoughts on today's topics. If you'd like to give us some feedback, send us an email at feedback at thisweekingeek.net. Tune in next time, and remember, lower your shields and surrender your listenership. We would be honored if you would join us. Thank you for your cooperation. Good night.